Here's a teaser frame for next week's video, which is already up on Nebula. Link for the video and how to sign up is in the description. You might forget to honor yourself. Luckily, I don't have that problem. Can't beat an opening record scratch, especially in a 2002 movie. Ever since I turned 13, I've been doing my own thing. So Maylin is four years younger than me, would have been in eighth grade as I was graduating, but her fit is on point, and you better believe I had a Tamagotchi at her age. Oh, crap. Also that, can't do one, so we're basically the same person. The shy embarrassment is just so perfect for 13. We're also way into fourth wall shattering territory, which was a fun surprise for a Pixar movie. I love May and her friends, but I'm gonna be upfront. This household is an Abby household. Let's so, burn this place to the ground! I feel no need to explain myself. A major weirdo. Chekhov's crush. <laughs> Self-confidence. My mom cuts his hair at the salon, and I felt it. It's very soft. For real, just the best character, maybe ever? He looks like a hobo. A hot hobo. Julie told me I looked like a hobo towards the end of my long beard days, so hot is hot regardless of hobo-ness. And Aaron T and Aaron Z are like really talented too. There's always a few guys in the boy band that everyone is meh about. I'm not gonna name names, but we know who they are. Already in love with the cartoon and anime inspirations popping up. But tickets to Four Town are like a bajillion dollars, and Devin's right here. And free! Classic if you can't love the one you want, love the one you're with. CD burning was still relatively new in 2002, so this was a big deal. Everyone remembers their bootleg Weezer B-sides and rarities with Michael and Carly and the cover of the Pixies' Valoria on it. This is relevant. What happened? Are you hurt? Are you hungry? Um, how was school today? Solid mom questions, we worry. Especially the Red Panda. Red Panda, my nephew Lincoln's favorite for a reason. In real life, they are absurdly cute and that's a stellar costume. I feel like this is a nod to Studio Ghibli and how like once a month someone will tweet, how does Ghibli make food look so delicious? These amazing cooking shots that are making me feel things I'm not sure I'm supposed to feel about food. Plus another anime nod with his whited out eyes. Ah, my favorite as a kid as well, Sports League. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that <laughs> is so pitch perfect. Done it a million times, wait, what? Don't look at the notebook, don't look at the notebook, don't. No! <laughs> Her irises completely disappear from terror. Goes to show no matter how fast you look, they always know. What we put is not. Huh? What? Mom. Oh. Uh, huh? Huh? Appropriate reactions, especially since we found out she just drew him as a merman. What have you done to my Maymay? The sheer unwillingness to assume her child would have done this herself is infuriating and also entirely relatable. She's just a sweet, innocent child. How dare you take advantage of her? Mom! I love my parents, and of course they embarrassed me many times, but this? This is next level. I feel traumatized by this, and I'm just watching it. Julie and I just talked about how these scenes always confuse us, because does May's mom not remember being a middle schooler? I pray to the good Lord above that I never forget. I don't see how I would. Middle school is the absolute worst already without your parents ending your social life. Is there anything else I should know about, May May? Nope. All good. <laughs> And obviously a solid way to completely lose the trust of your child. Why would you draw those things? Those horrible, awful, sexy things! <sighs> this is such a bummer to watch, but it's so on point. Her self-blame and feelings of guilt break my heart. My upbringing really wasn't like May's at all, but I had my own stuff, and there's a particular type of guilt that some interpretations of some religions cause kids that is such a bummer. Especially when you can't control thinking about horrible, awful, and yet very, very sexy things like mermen. Mm. Hey, no sugar. <laughs> That <laughs> quick callback. Also, I get it, Tim Horton slaps. Wait, did the red peony bloom? No, maybe? <gasps> the dad backing away so perfectly 2002. Please. You are now a beautiful, strong flower who must protect your delicate petals and clean them regularly. The awkwardness of this scene would be a lot funnier if it wasn't currently hitting me that I will be giving these types of talks much sooner than I am prepared for. Is anyone prepared? Can you prepare? No, the answer is no. And May's mom made a huge mistake with Devin, but so far she's doing great with this stuff. <laughs> Perfect timing on the retransformations. And herbal tea for cramps. It helps relax your- I got it, thank you, bye! <laughs> the hand gestures. Parents really know how to make everything just a degree more embarrassing. <laughs> Great sound design here. The contrast of how loud it gets immediately stressed me out. I'd be scratching the walls already. Hey. Did you like work out this morning? I got you, girl. Get you a friend like Priya. <laughs> the greasy deodorant residue all over her face. And there's the confirmation that the red panda is straight up puberty. The best and worst thing to ever happen to a child. What's with her? What's with your face? Get you a friend like Miriam.
on the horror movie turn with that score. Absolute dread. Tell him you forgot your Oof, the hostile films have nothing on how this moment made me feel. And the audible, invisible cringe from every person in that room. Not because pads are gross, but because this is just a level of cringe that humans weren't created to withstand. Snorri Cam on an animated character, a perfect escape shot. Awooga! Teenagers be feeling stuff. I'm just glad that Disney is finally willing to admit it, especially since they were the cause of so much of it for so many years. Look at you, Jessica Rabbit. Robin Hood, Ariel, Beast, Prince Eric, Jasmine, Little John, Sword from the Sword in the Stone. I should, I should probably stop there. Don't look at me! Stay back! And it's really so accurate. She's the cutest little thing trying to calm herself down, but puberty makes you feel like, well, a, a giant red monster capable of destroying city streets. I'm a gross red monster! <laughs> and what was a blessing became an inconvenience. What excellent delivery and facial expressions from the animators. I thought I had more time. You're just a child. I thought if I watched you like a hawk, I'd see the signs. Interesting how depending on the situation, Ming either calls her daughter a woman, especially now after she thinks she's had her period, or a child. It's a thing that a lot of parents do that can be super confusing for kids. Ugh, the image of a child hurting themselves so that they won't have to be different is just so deeply heartbreaking and all too relevant. Tap if you can hear us. One for yes, two for no! Abby's delivery literally never fails. She's always at 11. You're so fluffy! Appropriate reaction. I've always wanted a tail. Same! Wait, I mean, uh... <coughs> anyway, I, I really love how quickly they accept her and start complimenting her in their own ways. Also like to point out that May thinks she smells bad, but her friends didn't even notice. Another perfect analogy for puberty. Sure, you've been staring at that pimple 24-7, but nobody else even notices. The way her tears mat down her fur. Had friends and now bad buddies, but they don't turn my tummy. The line, turn my tummy, is so many levels of cringy awful, and there's no excuse it doesn't even rhyme with buddy. Perfect boy band representation. Ah, that sigh when you can feel the tension leave her, all thanks to her friends, can't beat it. Abby, hit me. Love this moment. First, it's not a miscommunication that Abby just clocks her in the face instead of the arm. She wants the panda back. And then when May is still a human, Abby is clearly sad because she wanted that fluff. Abby's trying so hard to be supportive. My mom already doesn't like you. Wait, she doesn't? Had a few of these growing up. She was right. But she also didn't know about some of the worst ones. Parenting, huh? Okay. It sucks sometimes. Love that they just have a box of kittens hanging around for this exact reason. You never know when Aunt Flo might show up. Is that, a, is that okay? Can I make those jokes? Ooh, boy, I hope so. Of course she has a full presentation. May does not half-ass anything. A for effort. Also, I love she's wearing her mom's power blazer, so it all seems more official and businessy. Look at those glittery delinquents with their <gasps> gyrations. I've always found it funny when adults want to shield teens from things like gyrations, when the reality is horny teenagers will literally see sex in a box of saltines. It's on their minds constantly, even if they don't fully know it or understand it. Censoring everything can lead to them going bananas and making a bunch of bad choices later. Who do they think they are? Celine Dion? First time I really agree with Ming. Queen Celine stands alone. Also, Sandra O's oh pronunciation is killer. Celine Dion? I love how seriously Abby is taking dodgeball. Look at that stance. The movement, the eyes. She's going places in this sport. And Priya's dodging is really next level. <laughs> his hair's legit scorched. Also just now noticing his Nelly Band-Aid. Love it. Find the power! Never change, Abby. She's like a magical bear? Red Panda! Solid correction. Kids these days understand that names of stuff matters. <laughs> this stance with the palms up. No shade, like we've all agreed, middle school is hell. It's the time that being emo or goth really feels warranted. It's a funny little detail that May swipes the ears right off Miriam's head, but also another hint that the panda is still not safe. Hey, the Priya's all-around chill vibe covers up the fact that basketball guys aren't her type. Red panda attack shadowing. I have a double-jointed elbow! Look! I can make a perfect circle! Wow! Whoa! I don't know what Christmas is, but Christmas time is here. They called me the Uncommon Denominator. Cool. It's adorable that she thinks they meant that as a compliment. You really don't have to come. Don't be silly. We're already on the way. But I don't want you to! I don't look forward to this moment of parenting, but it's gonna happen. At some point, I'll no longer be my kid's favorite person to be around. It's rough, but it's reality, and parents seem to forget this moment happened with their own parents. But I'll be the exception, and I won't cry. <laughs> Your family is here now, Mimi, and we will take care of everything. That never won't be ominous coming from Madame Gao. Clap, 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 clap your hands. What? You're telling me they're playing cha-cha slide and nobody is dancing? Dang, they really do need May. Your mother and I were close once. Nice move of her touching the scar, but not actually saying what happened. If we can't all go, then, then none of us should go. True solidarity, true friends. This is actually a great moment. They might be hyping Tyler strictly for financial purposes, but it's amazing how much support can help people open up and just have fun. It's his birthday, and yeah, he's a jerk, but everybody deserves to bust a move on their birthday. Oh, 
I don't care if you're 13, 80, or anywhere in between, there really is nothing like seeing your friend go for it with a crush, and I love how stoked these girls are for Priya. More solid friendship wins. <laughs> Abby's face. I know it's all relative, but considering what she could have found under a 13-year-old's bed, it's not that bad. Little entrepreneurship, a dabble of exploitation, who among us? Whomst? Go back to your psycho mom and, and your creepy temple, you freak! Well, he deserves everything coming to him. Look, you can make fun of me all day. Might hurt, but I'll be fine. Do you go after parents, partners, or kids, and all bets are off? I'm sorry. Just get off of me, please. May needs to learn how powerful she can be and that her power can be dangerous, but Tyler needs to learn not to be a little punk, so lessons learned all around. I can't believe you girls would use her like this. What? There it is. This film really nails how unfair things can seem as a teenager. Doesn't matter what they say, May's mom isn't gonna believe them because they aren't adults, and because she is an adult, that's just it. Sometimes being an adult sucks, sometimes being a teen sucks. This movie lets us have both. May, tell her. Dude! Oof, yeah, Abby said it best. They eventually forgive her, but 13-year-old Lee might not have. Another bing-bong moment that actually stings more than usual, probably because a lot of us have been there. This shot is perfect. This whole film is about becoming a young adult, and that moment of not standing up for her friends is compounded by this shot that so clearly paints her as a child again, holding her mom's hand. This will be a piece of cake, and mostly painless. James Hong never misses, and he's in everything. In fact, he's in next week's video. Well, there's a dad. Just the slightest bit of May hanging her head and he notices. It was quite destructive and big. She almost took out half the temple. I love that it sounds like hyperbole, but it's not even a little bit and he's probably underselling it. People have all kinds of sides to them, May. And some sides are messy. The point isn't to push the bad stuff away, it's to make room for it, L live with it. Ooh, Papa Jin dropping some life lessons we all need to hear. The door will open only if we sing from our hearts. I like Tony Bennett. Hmm, and what would May sing from her heart? Four town shadowing. Nope. Getting a real Lyra watching Roger and Celcilia being split vibes, and I hate it. I mean, it's well done and very fitting, but I hate it. It's like the opposite of the Matrix. What? You think I'm gonna see a whole entire part of myself get all sad and scared and abandon it? Not today, Satan. I love that in this memory montage that along with all the good times, she also remembers being aggressive to Tyler. She's not sugarcoating it, she heard what her dad said. No! I'm going to the concert! I get it, I do. Julia and I might be too old for the Death Cabin Postal Service show we're going to, but I would absolutely throw my entire family to the ground to get there. And it's a Spider-Man rooftop travel moment. Love when it dawns on her that this will work. May, you threw us under the bus. Honestly, good on Miriam for at least letting May know what she did was wrong. Part of becoming an adult is learning to stand up for yourself, and it's not just May that needs to learn that. No, Tyler. Who's who's Tyler? You I don't know what Tyler. Are a four Tony? Another very 2002 moment. While unabashed love of pop is cool these days, those of us who enjoyed a solid Backstreet Boys, Christina Aguilera, or In Sync jam back in the day had to hide it and listen to them in shame. Especially if you were a dude. Although to be fair, Toxic came out in 03, and I think that might have been the beginning of the end for people trying to act like they were too cool for Britney. I mean, it's just such a jam. Who cares? What's she gonna do? Around me? <laughs> <laughs> Speed racer laugh. Also, if you mean smash you into the ground, yes. Look, I may bump this song later, but more importantly, I love that there aren't any wires. May sees them as flying, so they're flying. Honestly, didn't expect the full-on kaiju third act. But holy crap, does it work. Everyone, go home! Where are your parents? Put some clothes on! But also, Mingzilla is still a mom at heart. The shadow of the roar. How could you be so crap? A huge red panda shaking her butt to distract her mom. Honestly, what a wonderful time to be alive. Destroy her with their big butt! Abby can literally do no wrong. Go to a Can't beat May having actual superhero powers now that she's developed through her own ingenuity. I never went to concerts. I tried to be a good daughter. And it's a highly entertaining boss fight that feels like a clear homage to a bunch of anime. But if you pay attention to what they're saying, it's pretty tragic. The idea that you didn't get to experience something so neither should your child is awful? It's just passing trauma onto your kids. Also slowed down, there are some super fun stylized frames in that impact. I feel like the soul smoke from retaking your red panda form probably smells good, but also gets stuck in your nostrils, you know? Like, cool, glad it's not gross, but I don't need to taste it for a week? What? Who's gonna say no to more red pandas? The more adorable pandas, the better. <laughs> Yuck.
Yep, even if Cap showed up, I'm not sure how you could make this any more enjoyable. The willingness to sacrifice something important to themselves to save their sister? Aw, even Tyler's trying to help. A boy band is helping open a portal to the astral realm with a bunch of teens by singing from their hearts while six red pandas attempt to drag a giant red panda into a magic circle and it's still all a metaphor for a mother-daughter relationship and also becoming an adult. Just so we're all on the same page. I'm never gonna be good enough for her. Or anyone. <laughs> I know it feels that way. Like, all the time. But it isn't true. Hoo-hoo-wee, this is hitting me in the feels. The daughter is telling the mom that she's good enough? A fantastic thing for both parents and kids to see and be reminded of. We're all still 13 or 20 or 35 on the inside, no matter how old we get. And a beautiful callback to May taking her mom's hand after the party. Hugging. Look, no spoilers, but next week is also about generational trauma, and these past few weeks have been a lot for your little cinema-winning guy. I think it's interesting that the auntie's pandas seem to have all come to terms with the separation. Jude has this book called How to Be a Lion, all about how maybe there isn't just one way to be a lion. Maybe a lion could be even be friends with a duck and write poetry, and even if the separation feels wrong for May, it might be right for someone else. Or maybe they have trauma. I just love that there isn't the right way in this story, especially after Grandma made it clear that she believed there was earlier. I know you'll do what's right. I'm changing, Mom. I'm scared it'll take me away from you. Oof, like I said, nothing is ever simple or easy. Growing up is hard. I'm sorry. If you take one thing from this video as a parent, that's it. Be willing to say you're sorry to your kids. It will change both your lives. I see you, Meme. You try to make everyone happy, but are so hard on yourself. If I taught you that, I'm sorry. So don't hold back for anyone. I'm betting there were a lot of people watching this who needed to hear those words. I'm not going to regret this, am I? I love that Sun Yi doesn't say anything because she can't answer it. She can't tell Mei how she'll feel. And that's one of the interesting parts of becoming an adult. Gray areas, getting older, regrets, they're all part of it. Love a boop. Not sure he deserves it, but I do kind of love that Tyler has been so quickly accepted into the friend group now. My panda, my choice, mom. Ah, teens. I do love that it's not all perfect now. This little look, it's still bittersweet even if Mei truly wants to grow up. No one said it would be easy. Dang, songs by Billy and Phineas and a score by Ludwig? No wonder I was bopping my head the whole time. Well, that's pretty dang sweet. <laughs> you know it does, yeah. Look, Abby's the best, but Jin rules. One thing I really love about this movie is that Malin isn't just a rebellious teen. Sure, there's bits of that, but we've seen that a million times. What was new and refreshing was seeing her genuinely love spending time with her mom, working at the temple and excelling in school. She's also starting to notice boys and wants to express her individuality, but even in the end, she doesn't forget where she came from. Like her dad said, we have to accept all parts of ourselves. It's not an easy tapestry to weave, but our director, writer, Domi Shi really, really nails it. One of the fun parts of the commentary is listening to Domi Shi talk about all the other people who were invaluable in creating this movie. It's her vision, but she's still in awe of the final product. And as always, with Pixar, the art is perfect. The character design is flawless. From Tyler's probably problematic by now Nelly-inspired Band-Aid and May's almost teenager but still kind of a kid style to the auntie's killer drip and the absurdly adorable red panda design, it's all gorgeous with its own distinctive style. Their teeth are enormous. Did you notice that? <laughs> you get used to it fast and it just becomes a reality of this world. And the character design specifically felt very real, which I know is a weird thing when your main can do this, but there are no Barbie dolls, even the mean girls have human proportions. It can be pretty all day long, but without actors it can still fall flat, and thankfully the voice acting is stellar. Sandra Oh has been on an animation tear for the last few years, and this is probably her best performance out of all of them. She nails the fear, indignation, and anger of Ming. The scene where she tells off May's friends, blaming them for May's behavior, gave me flashbacks of parents of kids I knew who were just fully in denial. And yet you still always hear the love in her voice. That's no easy feat. Hyann Park was obviously a standout for me as Abby, but all of May's friends were fantastic and brought real life to the world. But Rosalie Shang really carries the film as May. I bought all of her struggles and triumphs. The overstuffed confidence, the tantrums, the dipping back into being a kid, and the pain of wanting to be an adult but just not being there yet. And then of course the part about being a giant red panda. Turning Red can pretty clearly be interpreted as a film about a girl getting her first period, but it doesn't have to be viewed that way. It's relatable regardless of whether you experience menstrual cycles or turn into a giant badger instead of a red panda. The horror and embarrassment that May feels cross all boundaries. Middle school. Man, middle, middle school. But for a movie that looked like it was about a girl with cute red panda powers in the trailer, it caused some anxiety for me at times. May's mom is doing what she thinks is best for May, but that doesn't mean she isn't causing May harm. And that's a message that I feel is important for both kids and parents to see. I'm taking it to heart, Jude and Margo, so feel free to play this back to me when I'm being cringe in like 8 to 12 years, or like 25 years, whatever. 
I'm still glad to be seeing Pixar exploring new cultures and age groups and tackling tough topics that aren't always the cleanest to tie in a nice neat bow. I love being exposed to new people and hopefully the representation done right like this will be exhilarating for those represented as well. Next week's video is up on Nebula already, a full week early. It's a film that made me cry so much, and it's hard to just do a teaser when I want you to sign up for Nebula to watch it now. Hmm. Okay, you have three seconds to comment what it is. I'll know. Three, two, one. It's everything great about everything everywhere all at once, and it's up on Nebula right now. You can watch it ad-free with no sponsors and also uncensored and just the best streamlined version way to watch it. So check it out! And there was a lot in this one. It's a 31-minute video. It's no joke. Normally I'd be splitting that up into two parts, but it's all there for you right now.